Good evening, everybody, and welcome here to the Brevard Sports Network. I'm Alan Slaughterzinski, and I'm joined today by a very special guest. The second time the gentleman on the right side of the screen has been with us for over 50 years. He has been covering uh, Florida high school football and beyond, not just in South Florida, but all over the state of Florida. Nobody yeah. does it better than uh, Mr. Larry Bluestein. Larry, how are you? I'm doing great, Alan. I appreciate you having us on again. It's uh, always great to see the people and, you know, in that region, I get a chance to see them at a lot of the camps and the combines. And I'll tell you, this was, this was the year. And, and I, as you mentioned, I, I've been doing this now 51 years. I'd started this in 1970 when I was in high school and, you know, and, and if the reason why I, if people go, how do you stay around so long? Well, cause I, I, my willingness to adapt, to the different times and you know i mean it, and that's the one thing and this summer i'll i i don't think i've ever been so busy ever um because of the fact that the pandemic had us in a situation uh the year before where we couldn't do anything uh this year was a whole whole different story so uh yeah we got around to a lot of places it's interesting that you say that because it is it really is strange and we're going to talk about some of the 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 things that i think the pandemic caused leading into this season. Um, I do want to get your take before we start talking about recruits and upcoming schedules. And July 1st was the uh, the start of NIL, name, image, right. and likeness. Now, we know from a college perspective what this does financially for the student athletes. Right. But I take it a step further because, I, first of all, I, you know, who knows what the impact's going to be, but there at the college level, but I can't help but think that the impact at the high school level and the way that these recruiters are going to recruit these high school student athletes is going to have a bigger impact. What's your thoughts on that? Well, here's the thing. And, and it, you know, this, that's one of the, the points that I was trying to bring up, you know, while everybody's coming at me and, oh, they deserve to get paid. And, you know, OK, I understand. I understand the premise behind it. Uh, but the thing that I, I want to see what's going to happen is when that that booster who really has nothing to do directly to the school, all of a sudden says, hey, son, if you uh, come to uh, state next year, uh, you every every month uh, during the season, you'll receive a $10,000 check. Um, uh, who's to say that someone's going to be able to put a limit on all this? And, uh, you know, I could be, you know, a guy who uh, has millions and millions and millions and I own restaurants and I could just have uh, – Joe Brown come over there every Monday night and give him $5,000 just to show up because I'm paying for his name, image, and likeness. He's going to put people in the, my, my restaurant. So is there a limit? Uh, I just think there should have, before everybody plunged into this, there should have been guidelines made because heaven knows if Tim Tebow was still around playing college football right now, he'd be making more than NFL players. Uh, yeah. When you think about it, every church in the world would want him to endorse them and every, you know, cause he's a clean cut dude. He'd be making five, $6 million a month. I mean, yeah. so what's going to, and, and I do understand like in, 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 I'll put it in, in, in our area, Derek King, who was one of the first to benefit the quarterback at Miami. Now I understand his plight because to be honest with you, he's not playing in the NFL. He's a really good college quarterback. He's a gimmicky guy, but at the end of the day, he's five, eight and wet chicken. I mean, he's he's a really good football player. Um, he's uh, but he's not an NFL guy. So what he's doing now is inking all these little uh, deals for him to show up places, to wear T-shirts, to do this and that. So in his case, I can understand, you know, he, because what money he's going to make now is pretty much going to be it. Because unless he goes to the CFL and lights it up. He's just not an NFL prototype of guy, you know? So guys like that, I can understand. But you look at some of these kids who are five stars and, 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 and you know, they have the athletic ability and they deserve to get 
whatever anybody else is going to be getting when they get to college. But here's my point. I mean, when when do we draw a line? You know, when do we draw a line in, in a uh, Miami, Florida, Florida State booster gets involved and all of a sudden we're talking millions instead of yeah. just, you know, just, you know, they're only they wasn't this all about just putting some money in their pockets, you know, so I thought. That they, so they felt good about themselves, you know, maybe a few thousand in the bank to have, a, you know, that, that you could go out and, you know, have a good time and relax and not have to worry about a car payment here and there. You know, wasn't that what this is all about? Now it's going to be Fortune 500 stuff. I mean, yep. you know, I mean, when you well, think about it, I mean, it, it, and, and I'm, again, I am not the evil guy. I don't want to do away with it. I just have to see it get regulated a little bit. I mean, and, and you. you know, I mean. And, and you know, Alan, I'll tell you, you, you look at, and the, the one thing I like about it is because of what it's going to do for the females, because it's going to up their ante because of all the yep. pro products that they would use that everybody would follow and all these young ladies. And here's a perfect example is this Montana Fouts. She already had 1.3 million followers on TikTok. She's one of the best softball pitchers in America. She's at University of Alabama. She's easy on the eyes to look at. She's funny. She, you know, I mean, she's, She's a mega star, but she makes fun of herself and, 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 and does kooky things. But here's somebody like that, by the end of next year, she could be in that unbelievable, she could be one of the highest paid female college uh, yep. athletes. So bravo to that, you know, because this is a time where the, the women are trying to get that equal pay, which is really way overdue and coming. But, but it, yep. it, they have to understand it's just not, uh, it wasn't on a level playing field. And I think this becomes a level playing field because there are plenty of people who will pay for female athletes, you know, to, to, for their name, yep. image, and likeness as well. So to answer your question in a nutshell, let's see what happens. Let's, let's, let's understand that there's got to be some regulation. There's got to be some cap to this thing or it's going to get out of control. And the kid's going to be making so much money, he won't want to attend class. No, all I got to say is that Arch Manning is a sophomore or going to be yeah. a junior, Isidore Newman. By the time he gets to college, it's projected he'll make one and a half to two million dollars uh, before he walks on whatever campus he's going to walk on. That's insanely sick. And I'm here to tell you right now, it's got, in my opinion, I'm just going to say it. It's got no place in recruiting, no place in recruiting whatsoever. And how it's going to change the landscape of college football recruiting at every level, I can't help but think is disastrous for the sport. Yes, uh, I, I, I agree. I, I agree. I, I, I just think it's going to be disastrous. But again, you never know. College athletics could surprise me. I doubt it, Larry. Okay, no, But no, uh, they could no, surprise no. me. I don't they won't it, surprise you. They won't surprise you. <laughs> they won't surprise you. Not one bit. It's going <laughs> to... Everything that you know, Alan, is going to go is is going to happen because uh, you've been around a while. You've experienced this. You've had your highs and lows, and you you're you're a rational guy. So no, they they're not doing anything out of the or the ordinary. Just like when people come at me, boy, Alabama's going to get shocked in the opening game. No, they're not. No, they're not. No. I can tell you right now, <laughs> they haven't been shocked for the twenty years. They still got the same dudes. They recruit the same eight stars. They still have all those kids who get more playing time as sophomores no. and juniors than they do with seniors because the games are out of hand early. Those type of things you have to go to bat with, and you know if you're wrong once in every decade. But the but you can almost guarantee that the that college, the NCAA, will find some way to continue to screw this up. So no doubt about it. We're here with Larry <laughs> Bluestein from uh, Larry. Well, you know, check Larry out online. He's everywhere online. Nearly sixty thousand followers on Twitter alone. Um, at Larry Bluestein, LarryBluestein.com. I, you know, I visit Larry's site frequently. When I say frequently, I mean weekly. Um, Larry, it's interesting to me because as we get set to embark on high school camps, it's been an interesting off season because <laughs> it seems to me that there are far more camps, far more seven on seven tournaments going. It's almost like people took two summers worth of activities and crammed them into one this year to try to get all these student athletes looked at as much as they possibly could. There just doesn't seem to be enough time in a week, month, or a day to get out to cover all these kids because of everything that's going on. Are you finding that to be the case down there in South Florida? Well, here's the deal. I've been to 11 camps 
for, for colleges this summer. I went to Florida, Florida State, USF, UCF, Miami, Florida. I went to uh, FIU, FAU. I went to Southeastern University. Uh, I went to Florida Memorial. Um, I tried to take in as many camps as I could. 11 times I went. I went three times to USF, went to three times to FAU, and three times to Miami. I've been everywhere, and I can tell you, it was like it was scripted the last year that everybody said, you know what? While we're sitting here and distancing and quarantining, when we get out, this is what's going to be. So they had all these formulas already. People had their contingencies. You know, we're going to Alabama this weekend. We're going to go to Auburn, and then we're going to go to Florida, Florida State. We're going to go to West Florida. So they had all the contingency plans. Because I'll tell you what, Alan, come July, June 1st, you've never seen a jailbreak like you've ever seen in your life. Kids went crazy. everywhere. You were, you were seeing – you were seeing kids post stuff from your area, from our area, from everywhere, Tampa, Pensacola. Well, hey, we're here in, at Clemson, and we're here at Tennessee, and we're taking a tour of Wisconsin and uh, Michigan. So they went everywhere, and it was all kind of scripted out for those 26 days. That And I try to follow, and I try to follow, you know, because some places had COVID rules, other places, uh, what is COVID? <laughs> you know, yeah, I mean, right. uh, USF, 855 kids at one camp. <laughs> Um, I mean, it, it, I got home and for two days I was reading all these kids posts and I'm going, I never saw this guy, but I thought that this, <laughs> it was crazy. Uh, forget about the FAU one where they had 1100 kids at once. I mean, in right. 45 colleges, it's, but you know what? Some of those serve a purpose. Uh, it takes you a while to understand what it is. I think what those kids do is they gravitate towards the shirt, the color of shirt from like college that they think they could play for and then they went to their lines and their you know their their workout areas and stuff like that and that's the only way that becomes valid because there's no way on this living earth especially up in Tallahassee that you have 1100 kids that are all going to go to Florida State not even close no. not even point 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 one percent you get no. three kids out of that big group that may even entertain FSU that weren't invited so that's the theme uh, you, you know, USF, uh, uh, FAU did it real well. I think Willie Taggart uh, did a, 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 a really – because they had their new facility they wanted to show yeah. off. So instead of putting a billion kids in there, they had different sessions, and their sessions were 100 kids per session, which was great. They'd have 300 kids in a day, but they'd all be in different sessions. So I thought that was perfect. They let the parents, but, you know, socially distance. Miami had no parents up until the last till, uh, the last camp. Florida let uh, people roam. I had a chance to talk to every head coach in the state. Uh, all great, all doing tremendous. So, yeah, I had a really full, full time. Now what's happening, because you're in a dark period for the first three weeks of July, uh, yep. everybody's springing up at their individual events, seven on seven. So, yeah, I've been keeping busy. Uh, you know, I went to Kaiser. and But you know what? The, the one thing in, in – I run into the Space Coast kids all the time, uh, yep. no matter where I'm at. And that's the one thing I was going to tell you. They love to travel. And maybe the reason is it's a such a, such a centrally located uh, area. I mean, they're really mo – no, the Florida State, obviously, is far from everywhere. I mean, it's, it's far from everywhere. But you, what I'm trying to say is from Gainesville to Miami, uh, the Space Coast is right in the thick of things because you you could get to UCF in under an hour in most places. You could go uh, get to Tampa in three, uh, Miami in three. So you're you're right there. You're under that four hour mark, and that's that's pretty good in a state this big. Yeah, you're not kidding. Uh, once again, here with Larry Bluestein. You know, there's one thing that stuck out to me this summer. You mentioned Florida State, and I didn't get a chance to get up to Tallahassee. But I'll tell you what was interesting that Mike Norvell did was not only did he have the camps at Florida State, but he also took them on the road, which I thought was yeah. good. He did those youth camps this year where he traveled about six, seven different spots around the state of Florida. Now, he didn't do the high school kids, but the camp that he did here in Brevard County had close to, I think, 600 kids uh, at it, and they were all elementary and middle school kids. And I thought that was some pretty – Pretty quick thinking from uh, Mike Norvell and his staff to put something like that together over the pandemic, Larry. 
Well, I'll tell you this, um, and I said this last year at this time when the FSU people were buzzing me and saying, you don't know what you're talking about. I said, listen, I followed this guy since he began. He's a details type of guy. He's a PR guy who will never turn down an interview. He will always try to put his face and his product right in front of you. That's what he did. The man called me three times on my cell phone to get on my show so he can promote his different area school uh, uh, programs. Those youth things were, I mean, him himself, it wasn't like, hey, you know, uh, get Larry on the phone. No, he right. would call my cell phone and say, hey, you think I can get on the show and promote the uh, Miami events? Can I get this one, the Fort Lauderdale? And and like you said, he they had almost 4,000 kids statewide that attended those events. Yeah. And you know what? Whether FSU fans or not, they are now. They come yeah. with a T-shirt that they're going to wear to death. I mean, they're going to wear it to school. And, every, and it's all about branding. He knows that when he was at Memphis, no matter where he's been, He's always known that it's all about branding your product, and he is. And FSU is not a hard brand, to, uh, you know, to to have in this state because everybody knows about it. I mean, they 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 still like Miami, you know. In some respects are living in the past, but some of the past carried them to the future and carried them to the fans that they have now. So yeah, but I've said it all along, and I'll continue to say it right now. Florida is two years ahead of everybody else in this state. Two years yep. ahead of Miami because they're deeper. Uh, it wouldn't it wouldn't surprise me if they knocked off Alabama at home. It wouldn't surprise me. I mean, nope. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but they're the type of team because they're loaded. And when I went to their school and looked, walked around the locker room, looked at the names on their lockers, and I go, "Oh, geez, I forgot they had it." That's the idea. That's the premise between a national championship team and a team that's really not there yet when they have guys like that who are not even starting that are in that mix, but they were studs and you saw them with your own eyes. So yeah, yep. I think Florida, but I, I, the one program that I'd want to be in the state right now is UCF because they're going to be in that top 12 every single year. Malzahn will never leave. Why would he go to Arkansas to what? To watch Georgia and Alabama qualify for the playoffs and right. not that? No. He'll stay right where he's at. The man has got a he's got a gold mine happening. The school, uh, a one campus facility in the country. Uh, he's got Orlando to sell. Uh, uh, you know, uh, an area that's as as conducive to bringing up a family as anybody. So yeah, he's he's in a great spot. I think that when he first got there, I think it was in his mind it might have been a stepping stone to one of those schools, Alan. But I think when they yep. announced it, those twelve schools will be in there every year. I think he said, "Honey." Yeah, let's buy some more furniture. <laughs> you know what? I I I felt like Terry Mohair hit a home run with Malzahn. I really did. I, yeah. I to me, when you looked at all the hires in the offseason, I put Gus Malzahn at the top of the list, hands down. No and and then when they went to 12, I thought exactly what you did. He's never gonna leave. No brainer. No brainer. <laughs> Get in that 11 bedroom house. I have his grandkids move next door because That's I'll it. tell you what, that guy ain't leaving. No, he's, he's not here with uh, the legendary Larry Bluestein. 51 years covering uh, football in this state, college football, high school football. Uh, Larry, I think another thing that I've noticed, a trend this year uh, developing from a lot of high school football coaches is it seems to me whether their program played last year or like here on the Space Coast where they were only confined to having played teams within the county here – uh, coaches have won absolutely crazy this year, scheduling some of the toughest schedules I've seen in a long time in high school football. I love Ryan Schneider to death, but I look at his <laughs> schedule with the Coco Tigers, and I'm thinking, goodness gracious, if, the, if, if Coco's not ready for Cardinal Gibbons this year, they'll never be ready for him. Yeah, well, that, that, like you say, there, there's good and bad to that. Uh, the, the bad part is you go to play some of them top flight teams and you get worn down. And then when you have to play Cardinal Gibbons, you don't have the armor to get them. And it's funny you brought that up because I thought Cardinal Gibbons was the most uh, taken for granted program in the state of Florida. They're coming off a year where they beat St. Thomas for the first time uh, ever, <laughs> you know, so yeah. uh, and, and they have the firepower. They found out what had happened. And I, and I know that Matt DeBuck and then Ryan talked after that game and they both agree that where where you win football games, and we've been told this ever since we were eight, is up front. And what, what uh, Cardinal Gibbons has done is they have produced now some of the top offensive and defensive linemen in South Florida. So they 
become American Heritage. They become St. Thomas. They become Central. Uh, they become Northwestern. And that's what Ryan wants to do. He wants to fortify that line, uh, you know, because remember that in his area and in, in your, you know, in, in the teams that he has to play, Rockledge probably would be a close second, you know, when they play them because of the fact that there's always rivalries. and, and it, But it's not really as close as it could be. And Ryan needs to take that one step uh, further and by playing the schedule that he's playing, he's going to get recognized and the kids are going to want to come there. You know, I mean, yep. they, that's why they go to Miami Central in, in Miami because my because Miami Central's first three games are Don, John Bosco in California, Bishop Gorman in Naples, and Miami Northwestern at Travis Powell Stadium. Why wouldn't you want to go to a school like that where you're you're playing the best? And that's what's happening with Ryan, and I, and I think he's going to keep getting kids. You know, I mean, it's tough. It's tough to compete against history, and Coco is history in, in that area. And uh, you know, whether it be Odom or Ryan or Wilkerson or whoever's been there, they always get those kids. You know, like everybody, like the kids will say, they get those dudes, man. They get those dudes, and uh, they got then. They got two I want to ask you about, uh, two for new ones this year. I, you know, you look at uh, the, the rankings, and for us here in Brevard County, our highest ranked, um, I guess, prospect college recruit is quarterback Davin Wider. He's 82nd in the state of Florida on 247. Um, and he moves slides over to Coco. When I talk to Davin, I've talked to him several times this offseason, uh, he loved Holy Trinity, he loved Coach Hooks, uh, yeah. but but he felt like that maybe the offers that he was after weren't coming, and the big reason they weren't coming was because uh, he was basically told they, they hadn't seen him play against the level of competition they needed to see him play against. He's got all the measurables in, in the size and the arm strength. Um, what do you, what do you, what do you know about Davin and what have you seen yeah. him and uh, what do you think about the move to Coco? Well, I've seen Davin since he was nine, ten. He would yeah. go. He'd always go to those events. He's a, uh, you know, he's a kid who is a. Uh, I thought was kind of a system type of kid, and Holy Trinity had that type of system. He fitted. Had really good arm strength. He's got good awareness. He's a good size guy, and he's performed really well at the camps. Uh, the only thing is, is there's a question mark now. The game's going to speed up on him. Yeah, he's going to have a better fortress of of athletes around him that he had at uh, Holy Trinity by far. But here's the thing, but he's going to go up against a better, like you said, they're going to go up against better talent. So he's going to find out when the bullets are flying for real, uh, you know, what it's all about. He's going to have to make adjustments, uh, you know, and that's going to be the deal. He's, yeah, he may get it done, and this is no cut to Satellite or Bayshore or any of the other teams that may be on their schedule or whoever they may play. Uh, but the deal at the end of the day is, is how is he going to perform against those higher uh, ranked teams with big time corners who can jump routes that you usually throw with ease. So uh, he's going to, he's going to have a, this is going to test him from a lot of ways. Uh, Ryan Schneider is going to have to be his eyes and ears against those teams because they're going to throw coverages this way that he's never seen before. Obviously, yep. You know, I mean, yep. those elite teams and that's what made the Booker T Washington's and schools like that. So, valuable and so good throughout the years their team speed and that's what happens when you play these big time teams so but as as a prospect he's right there i think he's a an outstanding he's an outstanding guy I've watched him a number of times and i, I like him you look at uh, who i think is the best athlete in our county over at Vieira. Derek smith's got a beast of a russia uh, lineman up front uh and in yeah. in, in jamari lions uh he, he he's got a bright future, doesn't he, Larry? No doubt. Um, wherever he shows up, he's the guy. They go, he's the, he's the one they they point the finger at. And they go, hey, that's that dude. You know, I mean, that's that guy. Come on now, let's get. If I be, if you, and then the coach will say, if you get him, the coaches will be looking at you because they're watching him. So he's right. a motivational tool when he goes to those events. You know, and 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 people always say, well, how come those marquee five stars don't take part in some of the, those events? That's why, because what happens is people try to prove points against them and, right. and go at it a little bit harder than they should. And, you know, these are just skill events and not, you know, not dragging you down with equipment. But, yeah, he's special. First step off the ball is amazing. He's strong. He's very athletic. Uh, you know, here's a guy who was athletic when he was younger. So he didn't just get that way. And uh, that happens. You know, you're young. You're young and smaller. 
and you know you're more agile and then all of a sudden your your agility and your everything that you know your knowledge your strength your athleticism comes with you when you're six four and six three who's the top uncommitted recruit down your way larry wow they have a lot of them uh uh, the, uh running back from uh st thomas hankerson uh who yep. uh, just did a great job uh in the two two years in a row against edgewater uh, you know, two years ago as a sophomore, ran for 234 yards. Last year, 187. So, uh, yeah, I think he is. He got offered early on, but now they're see the running backs. And and here's another thing. And I know we we could talk for a year on, but the the transfer portal and the in the NCA allowing the seniors to come back. What it's done is clogged those rosters a little bit. And and to me, the transfer portal, the only people that are going to say, "Oh, I like it," are the ones who are benefiting. The ones that are losing kids for no reason at all, just because they want to leave, and now they're stuck. Like they need Drano in that thing because it's all stuck up with uh, with all these recruits. With uh, I'm going here, but they're going nowhere. They're right in that that transfer portal. There's no movement unless you know we're here and there because the rosters are full. So it's only getting worse and worse. And somebody has to find a way to clean that thing out and keep it clean because you can't get disgruntled. You can't get angry at practice and all of a sudden that's it i'm going into the transfer you do that and you're, you're signing your warrant because there's nowhere for you unless you have some coach says to you you know you leave there and tomorrow you'll be with us and don't do it bite your tongue till it bleeds right. you, you look at at some of the top at you know i'm looking here at some of the rankings you know dindy stewart Saab, oklahoma miami clemson um, look, I like Oklahoma to win the national championship this year. I, I really do with, you yeah. know, I mean, they got a great quarterback, Lincoln Riley's going to finally get sure. some defense there. Um, but these, you know, look, I, I commend these, these kids for committing, uh, to these schools prior to their senior seasons. But as you and I have both seen, uh, these commits tend yeah. to flip a lot, especially when Under Armour comes calling and they're in that game over there in Orlando. Um, right. As you look as you look around, guys like Dindy Stewart and Saab, how likely are they to stay with Oklahoma's, Miami's, and Clemson's of the world? Well, they are because of the fact that they're you know they're upper elite kids, and and if they didn't want to you know make a commitment, they wouldn't. You know, and people would hold on to their scholarship. It's it's not like, you know, an average down the road, maybe 50 to 100 type kid where, you know, hey, we can get a few of those. If you're a top tier kid, you're like Dindy Stewart, you're like that, you're like uh, Singletary, who I know he's committed. But you see Miami's hoping that maybe he'll flip just because of the, you know, T-Rob, who's done a really good job in the past with defensive back. So. Other than that, I think those upper crust type of kids are pretty solid, you know, to where they're going to go uh, because they, right now they got great relationships. They're looking forward to being as committed going into the season not and have a not having to worry about it and be showing up at a few of their games just on your own dime or going with your family and just hanging out, knowing that that's where you're going to be. A lot of kids like that, you know, I mean, it's it's yeah. it's rare these days to be that committed that young. But, uh, that you know, they're being explained. They have very little choice these days because yep. we're, we're coming out of uh, the worst time in all of our lives. So, uh, you know, I mean, and that's that affected everybody. College recruiting, probably first and foremost, because remember, they still are two years in. We're two years into this, and uh, they haven't they haven't been down to a, a practice uh, or seen a game yet in almost two years. Yeah. So that'll happen. That'll happen that's soon. True. But uh, yeah, crazy, isn't it? But uh, it, it, it uh, is. That, that's <laughs> amazing. Two more for you here, Larry, and we'll let you go. I know you're a busy man, um, and I know I'm probably putting you on the spot with this question, but other than the two that we've talked about here locally, because obviously we have a lot of Brevard County, is there anybody else here in Brevard County that has stood out to you over the summer? Well, you know what? I mean, to me, there's all different types of teams, teams that are on the rise and teams that may, you know, may not get the, get the ink. Cause they probably don't play the competition, but you know, shout out the satellite for what they did, turning things around, just to have a winning record. I don't care if they played uh, who they play just to have that, you know, just to have a winning, uh, you know, some winning feeling and you, you get a couple of those kids that'll stay around the area and you build like that. They have some uh, top kids. I saw them at a lot of camps. I'll tell you another team too, that uh, is on the way back to Palm Bay. I really think yeah. that they still have that core of athlete to get. I love the coaching staff. I like the fact that Burke uh, peeked his head back into the program a little bit. So, and that helps because, you know, he's, 
he was the guy. He's the one one guy that you know got the Nelsons and and all those type of guys to come in the Joe Cohens and you know the, the, those type of athletes. You know, and and I think Palm Bay. You know, people were a little bit when they first opened at Heritage and and, uh, and Bayside would take from them. I think that uh, other programs did, and and I think right now they're on their way back. They got great athletes. I mean, I saw the wrestling program finish second. You know, our third in the state, second or third in the state in, in, yeah. in wrestling, you know. So, I mean, you, you know, I mean, and that's what I'm trying to say. Programs like that, um, you know, teams like Vieira, they're big enough. They're well coached. Uh, they can pull some surprises. It's just that, you know, for me to say, oh, well, they got to stop letting, you know, their, their kids go to other schools. It's awfully tough. We're in a different time. I mean, there were, and I'll, I'll give you a staggering amount. And I know the area is bigger, but you got to think. Just in Dade and Broward, since the end of December, when the season ended, there's been 253 kids to transfer schools for football. I mean, Jesus. you know, so, if, you know, the average person thinks they have problems. I got a tally sheet right on my computer <laughs> that I keep all of the transfers. And when I talk to guys, I'll say, did you have, you know, people get offended. But when I go up, I go, was he here last year? You know, oh, you know, you know, they get they get real uh, you know, offensive because they're you know, who you're taking now. But no, I just ask it just to know how many kids and you would be, you would be just, it would oh, knock well, you over the, head of the frying pan. And it's Ray, and, Ray, Ray Kamika does it for us up here with three, two, one recruits. Yes. And I'm, obviously it's not as big as that list is, but for a County like Brevard, uh, yeah, yeah, I tell yeah. you what, it's unbelievable, Larry. Yeah. Well, but a lot of them, <laughs> A lot of them have the destination cocoa at the end of it. So, yeah. you know, I mean, or, or at least the majority of them. I mean, uh, uh, you know, a kid's not going from Space Coast to Heritage just for the heck. You know, I mean, it's, right. just, it's just not happening there. You know, to me, a team, a program like back in my day, as I said, Merritt Island, you know, I'll, I'll always have a fondness for, for Merritt Island just because of the, the kids that they produced over the years. And they still get guys. I mean, you know, I mean, it, you know, just not as many as Hurley would like and you know, when he was there and Bubba and all those guys were playing there and Brown, I mean, it was a different time. It really was not as many schools. You know, Rockledge was in a different division. They had Coach Wood who did his thing. You know, I mean, it just, it's changed. The, the, the area is growing. It's going to grow again. Uh, you know, I mean, you look at Vieira, but when I used to come up this way back in the 70s and the 80s, it was just one big field. Now it's going right. to turn into probably one of the largest cities in the, in the entire county soon i mean yep. they just got they got so many so that's what happens uh and 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 you look at your areas i mean i i'd love to see programs like coco beach and they got a new coach and i think he's really great and he's got a winning attitude but the whole thing is is just you're limited sometimes on the kids that you could get you know i mean yep. they, you just and and people are not accepting just to be five and five for a year or two you got to do that i mean if you were one and nine five and five to me is monumental and then you start getting over the hump and then you start you know getting a lot of those kids uh, it's just you have to play at your level you just can't you know coco is coco the reason why is they've got to play and it's taken them a while remember a couple of years ago they they played Trinity on national yeah. TV and see, yeah. they started stepping up and going to the, the events. Well, coach will, you know, had them doing that because he saw, he saw there's just no way I'm going to be able to beat this team or I'm not going to be central unless we up the ante and get, you know, the top kids. And uh, that's Vier the only way you can win it. Vieira too, yeah. you know, they went yeah. 9-0 in uh, yeah. 2014 yeah. Yeah. and then got beat 48, nothing by Port Charlotte. And then the next year, they go down and play Allen, Texas, and six playoff teams, and they end up in the state championship against St. Thomas. Yeah, Why? Yeah, because yeah. they played that tougher schedule, and it matters. No doubt. It really matters. Um, yeah, final that's question funny that you, you brought that up. That, that was funny. I didn't interrupt, but that was funny you brought that game up. Uh, Coach Mays and I were sitting there uh, on, on the – midfield line right before that St. Thomas game and he looks at me because we got my, we don't have much of a chance. I said, well, you know what? <laughs> You're here. You're here. Look at all those opponents on your schedule that wish they were here. I said, not the only thing you can convince your kids. I said, you weren't built like St. Thomas. That's the only difference. Right. I mean, they had some really good wins this year. They beat a tough that yeah. year. They beat a tough Lakeland team. They won up the Columbia yeah, they did. one. So, yeah, yeah. So that was a great – matter of fact, Very Vieira good. will play Baker County this year. Uh, second game of the year. Yeah, I'm looking forward to going up and covering that one. Final nice. question for you. What advice yeah. do you have 
for the underclassmen out there. Our county athletic director, Dr. Andrew Ramjit, about two about a month ago, went on sort of a mini rant because he was upset at the fact that middle school students um, are jumping on Twitter and they're committing to high schools. And he, you know, he just said, look, you just haven't earned the right to be able to do this yet. Um, what advice would you have for underclassmen, even in high school at this point, what it, to, to, to get to the point where they need to be a recruitable, not, not, not to Alabama, but a re, to be a recruitable athlete, Larry, based on your 51 years of experience, what are one, two or three things every student athlete must do? Well, first of all, I could I can understand where the county athletic director is coming from because of the fact that, you know, back in the day, I mean, you you really there was no voice. Social media has made this acceptable. And now you have places like FBU and uh, football hotbed and all these other places that are ranking you as 12 and 13 year olds. So you feel you have the blame. It's the blame can't be on the kids because they're right. just doing what's natural because Somebody just put them, uh, you know, somebody on a website just put them as the top 12 year old in America. Come on. I didn't, you know, the only thing I was top 12 in America is maybe flipping foot baseball cards when I was young. <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was the only thing. I wasn't, I wasn't being talked about as one of the top kids in the country for, for baseball or for football. It's just, but that's what happens, Alan. It plants, it plants a seed, it makes them entitled. There's the word that we'll, we'll use. Plenty of times, uh, you know, in, in future conversations, because these kids feel that way after having an Under Armour spend hundreds of thousands on a on an eighth grade game, on a seventh grade game, and I you know, know, you say to yourself, "Okay, if you're a kid, hell, I'm going. I'm where do I sign up? Because it's not their fault. They're just doing what adults and doing what people with all these ideas, and it all circles around to the dollar." It yep. because of the fact that you want to get Under Armour's brand out there. That kid's going to go through nine pair of sneakers by the time he's 14 years old. So yep. you know that, that that's what's happening. They're starting earlier. It's all about money. And uh, it's, you know what, I, I, the county athletic director is 100% right, but it's bigger than all of us. And it, yep. it just you will not be able to harness it now because it's already out. Uh, and the kids, at, uh, you know, I don't know if you follow the kid Austin Christian out of um, out of the uh, Naples area, Fort Myers area. Well, this kid's only like 12 years old, 13 years old. He's been on uh, Twitter and he's been on these uh, national showcases since he was nine years old. So it's a little tough, you know, to to take that away from a kid who's been spoon fed that by adults. OK, the, the adult. Uh, you know, is usually the authoritative figure, and they go, yeah, 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 drink from that poison bowl. Go ahead. You know, I mean, they'll do it because of the fact that the adult who's been there done that has told them. Because as we found out, you and I know that all adults are not right. So, um, and a lot of the things that they're doing are detrimental, and uh, this is one of them. They, you're not going to stop it. It's already started. The kids are already in the spotlight at 12 years old and coming up to me. When are you going to when are you going to rank me? Oh, okay. When you shave. <laughs> yeah, right, right. When you shave, I like that. Well, Larry, I'm 51. I'm still having some issues. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Larry, I tell you what, um, it's always a pleasure to talk to you, my friend. Thanks, and uh listen, good luck, safe travels this season. Thank I know you. camps get underway. And uh we'll catch up uh after the season's over. Look forward to it. Thanks so much. All right, Thelma, much thanks to Larry Bluestein from uh Bluestein Recruiting. Larry, have a great one. Thanks, Alan. All right, take care. Okay, it's about teamwork.